The movie Black 47 begins with a man in a pub. His name is Hannah and he's a former British soldier. Now, he works as a police investigator shadowing Irishmen who want an independent Ireland. One day, he is interrogating one such Irishman who does not reveal his accomplices, even when Hannah threatens him. Hannah becomes so angry that he strangles the man to death. The year is 1847, the height of the Irish famine. The entire nation is ruined. Because the people do not have enough to eat, they are either dying of starvation or emigrating to America. Martin O'Feeney is an Irishman who chooses to fight for the British crown. One day, Martin deserts his army and comes back home. However, he finds out that his mother has passed away and his brother was hanged for stabbing the bailiff. The only family that Martin has left is his brother's widow, Ellie. Ellie and her three children are living in abject poverty in an old cottage with little to eat. So, Martin shares his food with them. Ellie's son, Michael, does not talk to his uncle Martin with respect because Martin left Ireland to fight in the British army. But Martin doesn't care. He tells them that he is going to America and asks them all to come with him. The next day, Ellie tells Martin about the famine and how much it starved the people. She also tells him about their landlord, Lord Kilmichael, who has been evicting the poor people. Ellie takes him to his mother's grave and goes home, while Martin stays back to pay respects to his mother. When he comes back, he finds English and Irish inspectors of the RIC who are trying to evict Ellie's family. Martin tries to negotiate with the RIC, but they don't listen to him. So, he tries to go in, but the soldiers attack him and pin him down. So, Ellie and her two daughters come out peacefully while the RIC start dismantling her house. Michael comes out and attacks one of the agents. So, the soldiers shoot him dead. Ellie cries for her dead son. Michael's sister look with shock and confusion, while Martin can only struggle helplessly. The RIC soldiers take Martin away for questioning. They start to guess that Martin is an army deserter. When they take out his kukuri, Martin kicks the weapon into the man and shoots him. Then, he attacks the other soldier. Once he's done that, he takes the kukuri and slices and stabs all the soldiers there one by one. Martin goes back to Ellie's cottage, but its roof has been torn off completely. He goes inside and sees Ellie and her daughters huddled in the corner. It snowed last night, and all three of them died in the cold. Now, Martin is a man filled with anger and vengeance. These were the last family he knew, and they're all dead. Next, we see Hannah, who has been arrested for killing the man at the beginning. The military officers offer to release him if he arrests Martin for the murder of the soldiers earlier. Hannah and Martin serve together in Afghanistan, and they know each other. Hannah does not want to hunt his fellow soldier, but they threaten to hang him. So, Hannah agrees. He is sent alongside another officer named Pope. Elsewhere, Martin takes a pig and goes to his mother's cousin, Bertla, who was also the rent collector for the Lord in these lands. Instead of helping Martin, Bertla tries to shoot him. But Martin has already removed the bullet, so the gun does not work. He gets up and kills Bertla with a kukri. Meanwhile, Hannah and Pope are coming to Western Ireland to find Martin. On the train journey, Hannah realizes that Pope is arrogant and does not care for the difficult situation of the Irish and the famine. Elsewhere, Martin goes to see Judge Bolton, the man who sentenced his brother to be hanged. Judge Bolton is extremely biased against the Irish and gives harsh punishments even for minor thefts. Martin goes to meet Bolton in private and tells him that he hanged his brother. But Bolton does not care and tries to send Martin away. So, Martin takes the noose and hangs Bolton outside his window. Meanwhile, Hannah and Pope are joined by a young soldier named Hobson. They put on plain clothes and go into town. There, they see Bolton's corpse. The sergeant informs them that Bolton was killed by Martin. Hannah, Pope, and Hobson then check the countryside for clues. They pass the poor and starving people until they reach the house of Bertla, the rent collector that Martin killed. Martin has put a pig's head on Bertla's body. A man named Connolly tells them everything that happened in exchange for some coins. He also takes them to Ellie's home where Martin has put Bertla's head. Connolly offers to work for them as a translator. Elsewhere, Martin reaches a local Protestant church. The preacher has been offering soup to the hungry people, but in exchange, he is forcing them to renounce the Catholic Church and become Protestant. 
Martin's mother was also tempted by this preacher, but she apparently chose to remain a Protestant and went hungry instead. That was how she died of starvation. Martin goes in and takes a bowl of soup without permission. When they try to stop him, he takes the preacher and his wife outside. All the Irishmen enter and take the soup. Elsewhere, Hobson says that Martin is a coward for deserting, but Hannah says that Martin was the best soldier he ever knew. He also says that Martin saved his life in Afghanistan. The next day, they go to the house of a bailiff named Cronin who evicted Martin's mother and also Ellie. He is a governmental agent who works for Lord Kilmichael. But we see Martin has already reached Cronin. He corners him in his barn. Hannah and the rest arrive just then. So, Martin shoots at them. Pope's horse is killed and he is pinned down on the ground. Hannah and Hobson go around the flanks while Pope aims at the barn. Martin comes out suddenly and knocks down Hannah. Hobson and Pope shoot, but they miss. Hobson comes and aims at Martin, but he's too scared to fire. So, Martin escapes. They all go inside to find Cronin dead and buried in the grain. Pope sends a servant to warn Lord Kilmichael about Martin. Then, they continue on Martin's trial. That night, when Hannah is keeping watch, Martin comes to him aiming a pistol. He takes Hannah's rifle away. They start talking about the terrible things they did together in the war. Martin says that fighting for the English was not worth it because he came back to see his family in poverty. He asks Hannah to go back to his home in England, but Hannah says that his own life is on the line. Martin leaves without saying anything more. The next day, Hannah and his group arrive at Lord Kilmichael's home. Kilmichael has put a bounty on Martin's head, so there are a lot of bounty hunters there. Pope and Hannah tell Kilmichael how dangerous Martin is. But Kilmichael is overconfident in his personal guards and the bounty hunters. Instead of being wary of Martin, he chooses to take his grain to town. Since the Lord is stupidly stubborn, Hannah and Pope don't say anything more. Outside, Hobson is shocked to hear that Lord Kilmichael's grain is not meant for the poor Irish people. Instead, it's going to England. So, he takes a guard hostage to try and give food to the starving people. Pope and Hannah try to talk to him, but the sergeant shoots him dead. Lord Kilmichael is not sympathetic. Business as usual, he enters his carriage to take the grain into town while the poor people follow him trying to get something to eat along the way. On the way, Lord Kilmichael behaves arrogantly, saying that the potato famine has profited his own business. He is confident that Martin has given up, but Martin is actually following them even in the rain. That night, Kilmichael stopped at his house in the town. Pope, Hannah, and Connolly also stay in the same house. Kilmichael is still arrogant as ever, and he sleeps soundly. Unknown to anyone, Martin has infiltrated the home and killed a guard. He goes to Kilmichael's bed, but it's actually Pope waiting in ambush. However, Martin is too fast and knocks out his gun. He is just about to kill him, but Hannah stops him. Kilmichael also arrives and commands Hannah to shoot, but he lowers his gun. Martin knocks out Pope, then he takes Kilmichael and escapes into the night. Martin takes Kilmichael to the countryside. Kilmichael is still arrogant as usual, but Martin is calm as always. Meanwhile, the sergeant has arrested Hannah for treason. Pope also suspects Hannah of collaborating with Martin from the very beginning. The next day, Hannah is taken to be executed by a firing squad. The firing squad prepare to shoot him, but Martin shoots them instead. He then enters the courtyard on a horse, so Pope commands his men to shoot. They kill him instantly, but surprise, surprise, it's actually Kilmichael who has been killed. Martin himself has actually infiltrated the mansion, and he is going full John Wick on the soldiers with the rifles and the kukri. Hannah also ambushes a soldier and takes his rifle. While the English soldiers are trying to understand what is happening, Martin creates utter confusion. Pope tries to shoot him, but Martin shoots him instead. Just then, the sergeant comes and they get into a melee fight and fall into the stables. While they are fighting, Pope comes and loads his pistol. Meanwhile, there is confusion in the estate as the peasants are stealing Kilmichael's grains. Connolly is helping them in this. Martin strangles the sergeant until he is unconscious. 
He is about to leave, but some soldiers prepare to kill him. But just then, Hannah comes and saves him. As they are leaving, Pope shoots Martin. Hannah tries to shoot back, but the rifle malfunctions. So, they leave it just like that. Hannah and Martin go far away, where Martin falls down, weak from his wounds. He tells Hannah that the English will come after him now. He advises him not to fight, but instead escape to America just like he himself had once planned to do. Sometime later, the guards take Kilmichael's body away for his funeral while Connolly and the other Irishmen watch. Elsewhere, Pope is injured from Martin's shot and he is riding back alone to Dublin. Hannah follows him looking for vengeance. He comes to a crossroad where some Irishmen are taking the road to America. One of them is Martin's niece, who somehow survived all this time. Hannah looks at Pope and then at the group of people. He has a decision to make. It is not shown where he goes. The movie ends with a dedication to those Irishmen who died in the famine and those who went abroad, never to return. And this is how the historical thriller ends. For more unique and fascinating movies that you may not have even heard about, click on the videos on your screen. Also, do subscribe, like, and comment. Your one act will make a huge difference to us.